Hey guys, it's Rian again. Um, as usual, I'm joined today by my good friend Chris Bright, and we're very lucky to have Stephen Theodosio. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, he's well from on. Eastgate Motor Group, um, and it's great to chat to you. Stephen, how are things on your side? Uh, all good. Not too bad. We, uh, we're weathering the storm and, uh, and having a go. That's like it. Chris, on your side, are you guys surviving? Uh, pretty much the same as usual. Yeah, everything everything has become online at the moment. So we're doing online jujitsu classes, speaking to our friends online. Um, I can't remember the last time I've touched a person from outside of my family. So it's like an odd time at the moment. I'm used to choking people. I can't choke anyone at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. Yeah. Um, Stephen, one of the re that's that's one of the reasons we wanted to chat to you today as well. Um, with the, you're the what exactly is your position at Eastgate Motor Group? Let's start there and then we can do an introduction. We can take it from there. I'm one of the directors of the Eastern Cape Motor Group. Uh, there are three of us. Uh, so I, I pretty much handle the Port Elizabeth uh, and the big facility we've got in Boxburg. And I have a brother in East London who handles King and uh, East London, which incorporates Ford, Volvo, um, Land Rover there. Okay, cool. Um, just jump into it. I mean, everybody's at the moment with uh, COVID-19, everybody's affected by it. A lot of people are sitting at home. How has this affected your business, in, if it has in any way? Yes, it, uh, it, it definitely has. We've, um, we've been back for uh, almost, the end of this week will be two weeks, and, um, and we, we're back on a 30% skeleton, which enables us to, to service essential vehicles initially and now um, we were able to service uh, people that that need to have their their services done the scheduled services that were missed so we're almost back to to normal we we can also sell um, but the sales of vehicles is largely inhibited by uh, on the new car side um, the number of people out there that are going to buy new vehicles and then on the used car side where there is definitely more demand um, the 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 government in terms of um, uh, post office that does licensing and um, the roadworthy departments are not there they were open and then closed so so used cars can't actually function until um, the roadworthy departments uh, come on come online that's our biggest inhibitor at the moment I, I do believe that first um, of June that uh, things will be moving. So it, it, it is in fact um, uh, just around the corner if we look at it in days, but it's, uh, it's been immensely frustrating because everybody has been given permission to trade and now can't trade yet. So uh, we, we're waiting for the infrastructure to come on stream. That's, that's an interesting thing. I, I think a lot of people don't consider the, the, the different role players involved. I mean, like you said, you, you can sell cars. I mean, anybody can walk in and say, I want to buy a car. But without the proper paperwork, I mean, things have basically, you know, grinded to a halt. I mean, it's, you don't realize that you need a post office to buy a car until it's time to come and buy a car. You know, that's the one thing that people don't keep in mind. And it's funny enough that you say that. I mean, from a, from a, uh, like you said, new car sales, that's a little bit slower at this point as well. Where basically the services is what's keeping you, I'm not saying keeping you guys going, but I mean, that's basically the bulk of your business at, at this stage. Yes, they, they're quite nice and busy. Um, the, the difficulty with, with that is that we're on a 30% skeleton. So you've got 30% of your staff. So you're only allowed um, X amount of technicians or each dealership. So for, for the dealership that I'm in at the moment at North End, that allows you uh, probably about five technicians, which then will allow you um, somewhere between uh, 15 and 25 cars a day kind of thing. And I think um, it's frustrating for people because they, they would like to get their car serviced and then we've got to book them in. And then when we book them in, we've got to stagger them so that they are social distanced and they come in at the right time so that the skeleton staff can give them the proper treatment and look after them. And, uh, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a test getting, getting used to that. But generally, 99% of the, of the customers coming in um, are, are very obliging and, 
reasonable and understanding. You 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 get the odd one that's uh, that that probably needs uh, Chris to throttle them a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but other than that, you know, everybody generally is uh, is is keen to to take part in the way that the in the spirit of things. So the the sanitizing and the and wearing the masks and all the good things um, are, uh, are are critical items that have got to be adhered to, and then we get on with the job. I, I think that's something that that still that some people are still struggling to realize is that we're all in this boat. You know, it's not there's no one that's special. No one's exempt from the rules. You know, we all have to oblige. And like you said, ninety nine percent of people are fine, but then you get that one percent that walks in and like. His car is more important. You know, his business is, is, is the only one struggling. He's the only one that needs to get somewhere. And I've, I've seen that. It's frustrating. Well, I'm in the agriculture. You get people that don't, they don't get the, the bigger picture. They're like, I'm important. So deal with me first. And that's, that's yes. the thing that, that, that I feel like, like you said, someone needs to give them a clap or just wake them up a little bit. Because, I mean, it's, you need to realize that this is, we're all in this together. There's no one that's exempt from this. And that's the, that's the frustrating thing. I think a lot of people have picked up, um, you know, just going, going forward. And I mean, I, I'm hoping that more things pick up, but at this point, um, we, we have no idea what the, what the schedule is looking like and how, how long this is going to last. I, what's your plan going forward looking like, Stephen? Like, I mean, obviously we've got things we're hoping in June, things, things get a little bit more efficient. We can get more people on board or more things open up. What's the future looking like on your guys' side? How are you guys taking it? How are you guys phasing things back in? We, one, of the, one of the big things is, uh, and you talk about frustrations, um, customers also don't realize that in order to service a car, you've got to have parts. And we've still got to get those parts from the factory who are also on skeleton. Mm -hmm. so, so our skeleton might be working, but their skeleton might not be working. So, because uh, we right now we're going through a scenario where where a, a simple part like an air filter um, is causing quite a quite a bit of havoc because um, we've got to the, the the stock from overseas hasn't arrived or is busy arriving. They've still got to get that to us. So we've got to service cars, and then and then and and then the the, the is an odd customer that you've got to let go and then bring him back as soon as those filters mm -hmm. have arrived. So there, yeah. there are some, some tweaks, but, but generally we'll get, we can look after the customers and, and most guys are, uh, are more than reasonable. The, 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 the situation, it is about team. Hey? It's, it's, and it's not just about our team. It includes the customer. He's part of that team. So uh, making it all work is, uh, and fitting all these little bits and pieces together is, is quite important. Yeah. Um, now this is, this is one thing I also wanted to touch on. So obviously this is, we keep hearing the word, this is unprecedented times. This is the first time that something like this has happened in, in South Africa. Um, but you guys lo looking back, I mean, you guys have a rich history. Obviously it's the first time you guys are struggling with something like this as well. Um, looking back over the years, I mean, I, I did a quick read up on you guys <clears throat> from, when, when Escape Motor Group started in, in, in South Africa. But can you run us through this process? I mean, we, we're talking about the now, but how, what was the process for you guys getting here? I mean, you guys have been in business since the, the 80s, if I'm not mistaken, in South Africa. What is the Escape Motor Group's background that we can just, just uh, get to know you guys a little bit better? So, we, uh, the old man um, came from Rhodesia and, uh, and he ran a motor group in Rhodesia. And when it was time to uh, leave there, when he was uh, forced to leave, he came to South Africa and worked for Brian McCarthy. And, uh, and he fixed uh, several uh, dealer groups for Brian McCarthy, both in Durban and then in Joburg. And Brian McCarthy said to him, look, you've, um, you've really done a, a job that we couldn't fix ourselves in a very short period of time. Um, and we, there is something that's never happened before, but there's an opportunity arriving in, uh, in Port Elizabeth. We've, because of the uh, recession, uh, 1984-85, we've had to give, uh, we're closing two dealerships, one in Port Elizabeth and one in East London. 
And uh, if you want, go and have a look. You're going to have to find some money and uh, see if you can have a go at it, which is what the old man did. Um, finding the money was, was a trick. And, um, but one way or another between Brian McCarthy and in those days, uh, Sam Cor, um, they managed to put together a deal. All the, all the staff in those two branches that were, had received their retrenchment letters um, had a, a second, literally a second chance. And, um, and they put together a deal and, uh, and, and started swimming in, uh, in literally in January 85. So we, we just on 36 years. So, um, and that, that group grew from those two dealerships then to the, the 14 that they are today. Um, and it's largely been a, a family effort. Uh, Chris, the old man and, uh, and a colleague of his that he brought from McCarthy's with him, Barry Burnett. Um, and then a, another director from, uh, from his Zimbabwe days. Um, uh, Mr. Lowenthal yeah. and uh, Bobby. Uh, so the three of them and myself uh, had a go from uh, January 85. Uh, we lost the old man earlier this year. Um, uh, but he'd retired from the business uh, about four or five years ago. So, so we've, we've been running it. And strangely enough, um, in, in, in his days, um, he, he never saw the, the test that we've got here. But in his days in, in Rhodesia, they, um, uh, they had sanctions against them. Uh, he had to find a way to break sanctions and get cars there to, to sell. Um, uh, they didn't have the forex to buy the cars with. So they went through all these strange tests. And I, and I remember as a youngster where one day he, he said to us, you know, we, we've got no cars to sell. So we're going to make a living by selling caravans. So uh, there I was a lighty visiting the dealership on a Saturday morning and it was filled with caravans. And, and they went for months where they, that's how they made a living. They, uh, they, they battled through, got the odd car, sold caravans and, and uh, somehow managed to, to keep the machine going. So uh, he had tests in his day and, and, and we've got one here. If he was here, I'd be able to say to him, look, ours is much bigger and more testy, but he'd, he'd, uh, he'd definitely tell me off about that. So, um, it, uh, it, it, it is a, a rather odd circumstance and, uh, and, and we don't have a choice. Hey? You've got to save what you can, look after the families that we can, because the, the, the ethic that the old man had was that uh, whoever, we pretty much are the only motor group that's never retrenched staff in, the, in our history. And uh, currently, every other manufacturer, every other motor group, and most of them, quite, some of them quite a bit bigger than us, um, are all retrenching a lot of staff because you, you have to. It's the, it's the biggest component of your, and, uh, and, and dictates your survival as you go ahead. Um, and we're obviously hoping that we're going to find a way through this without any of that. Uh, and I'm not sure whether that's possible, but uh, as we go down the road together, that's, that's, uh, that reality will either dawn dawn on us or, uh, or we'll find a way through it or around it or something we uh, we're having a go um, but our, our our people is not our first cost cut um, so we, we're looking at all the other alternatives yeah. and hopefully uh, uh, we'll we'll get through it um, as the as we're allowed to get back more staff uh, next next week we're allowed 60 percent of staff and then on the 8th of June, we're allowed 100% of the staff. Um, but we will, we will continue to run in, in our group uh, a little more cautious than, than anybody else into, or the others. And we're going to continue to run the, the, the two teams that we're currently running on so that if we do have a, a, a hit from the virus, uh, we'll always have a team to give us some level of continuity. So we'll run that way for some time. Um, until we get to grips with uh, with the realities of of whatever's coming at us, because there 
there, there's so many um, variables and it's very clear that, that the whole world didn't really understand this coronavirus. Um, we take, for example, where some of the manufacturers said you, you have to uh, do a deep cleanse uh, after being five weeks um, vacant. Now, we all knew that the virus couldn't live for five weeks in a facility. So, so why spend thousands of rand deep cleansing when you could be putting that money into, into salaries? Anyway, um, and, it's, and we're now finding out again in very recent news that, um, that the virus doesn't live for long on, uh, on all sorts of um, uh, substances and surfaces. So, so there, there, there's so many unknowns and things that are, that are testing everybody. And, and in that, so much fake news and, and so many of these strange things coming at us that... Um, this 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 fear mongering has definitely um, uh, taught us some new lessons, and and in fact, strangely enough, uh, we were just reminding ourselves early this morning, and it's a, it's really a, a worthwhile listen. Uh, but that that um, Navy SEAL, uh, his name is William MacRaven, uh, mm. recently did one on a short clip on where he on fear where he got told that he had cancer and, uh, and what it was going to do to his life. And, and he left uh, Afghanistan and came back to America and found a, a, a hotshot oncologist in Texas. So uh, look up uh, uh, Mac Raven, MC Raven um, and fear. And he talks, about, he talks about hope and what hope has done uh, for him and his family and what hope could do for us all because when we live in hope and we uh, and we, we we look at where we actually are and all the blessings we have uh, it it then gives you a little of a little armory to to settle down understand exactly what the circumstances is it and uh, and then and then hopefully gird your loins and, and battle on eh? <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely I think largely when, when people think of a, like a, an empire or a big business, and for, for, for me, if I look at Eastern Cape Motors, it's really like the, the formative vehicle brand in the Eastern Cape. And it's something that if, if we and I were talking before the podcast, and if we think of vehicles in the Eastern Cape, we think of Eastern Cape Motors. So you guys have done a great job as far as the brand goes. But when people think of brand, they, 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 think, of, they think of sales and bottom line. But what people don't generally look at is, is, is the people behind that. So... You know, you touched on that you've got so many people that, that are dependent on you for, you know, to, to keep your business succeeding and kind of flowing. How, how, what is the extent or how, how what is the, the size of your workforce? How many people or families do you support at the moment? Chris, we, we uh, I, I guess many would say we're not a big business and, and many will say we, we're a small business. But the fact is, for us, we've got 700 families that we've got to look after. So... 700 employees and families behind that. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and most of them are, are like you and me, we, we going, it's, it's a testing time. The, um, so for them to, uh, to get looked after is, and to make sure that there's an income to buy food is a, is a real test. So yeah. um, uh, it's, it's, it's a hell of a responsibility, strangely. So uh, yeah. I'm just going to duck. I can see my, my plug has, uh, has been bumped. Give me one sec. At least Rian hasn't kicked you out of the podcast again. So. <laughs> not this time. Not again. Not again. <laughs> so, uh, it's, you know, I, I, I think one of the most important things for us is, is we view, the, view each dealership as a team. So we, we have 14 teams and uh, some are big and some are small. Yeah. Um, and uh, so a medium one is about 70 families, 70 staff, and, uh, and a big one is, is just over 100. And, uh, and we just look at each team and how we, uh, how we, we balance that team and its continuity. Um, and generally, 
all the people in the team realize just how serious things are and, yeah. uh, and, and what it's going to take to go forward. Um, so I think as we, in a way, the, the reduced number, the 30% that we got to operate with, uh, it, it does test our patients and it tests the customer's uh, uh, patients too. But the fact is, it's, it enabled us to, to swim by degree. So uh, we are having to, um, to put together an initial team to cope with, uh, with work now. Uh, we, we can add a few, a few more uh, soldiers to the, to the team in, uh, on Monday. And then, yeah. uh, and then we'll, uh, in June, add, add uh, a, a few more. But we're definitely going to keep two teams uh, in the fray so that we, we have the, the consistency to, uh, to look after our customers. Because if we have to shut down for 14 to 21 days um, as a result, uh, the 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 people we hurt are not just our ourselves, but the ones we depend on, and that's our our customers. So we've got to make sure that we we have the capability to look after our customers first. Yeah, yeah. In in a way, if I look at the the brands you're positioned with, you you you're very fortunate in a way because you've got a you've got a great balance between what people would term practical buyers and then emotional buyers as well. So you've got some brands that really um, command loyalty i think they've got a very like niche following and you've got other brands that are like it just make financial financial sense um and we were talking about the, the the lines that you carry or that you're responsible for would you would you mind talking us through the brands that you have and how that came about that was it was it good luck or was it strategy over the years to position with these particular brands so uh, s some of it was was good fortune because because ford um, had uh, uh, bought Land Rover and Jaguar, and um, and then they bought Volvo, and then and then over time, when uh, when uh, the financial crisis hit, um, there was uh, they Ford were in fact run were being run by a, a rather uh, slick MD. Uh, his name was Malali. He'd 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 uh, pulled Boeing out of a uh, out of a crisis, and uh, Ford had brought him in. And then Malali um, pulled one or two very strong players around him, and one of them was a was an, an English guy called Lewis Booth, and I and I mentioned Lewis Booth because he was actually MD in South Africa at one stage. Uh, he then moved to become MD of uh, of Mazda, um, because Ford also took took over Mazda or took a share of Mazda, um, because Mazda is a an amazing uh, little little company. It's uh, and I say little because it's 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 smaller than uh, than a Toyota or a Nissan or a Honda in Japan, but mm -hmm. uh, it's probably the one with uh, with the biggest heart and the most resilience um, because obviously they took the bomb in the Second World War, and um, yeah. and the Mazda factory was the one that. Um, that enabled uh, Hiroshima and the and the few that were left in Hiroshima to to actually live because their factory became the hospital and the communication center. It was located on the other side of the hill, so they oh, were located wow. on the side of the hill that didn't take the the impact of the of the of the waves of the of the atom bomb, and um, and uh, Mazda Mazda was the place that that gave Japan hope. Um, I'm not sure if you if you're aware, but um, having been there once, uh, when you see the devastation and just this desert of of rock and and steel um, and nothingness, one day um, when they were absolutely blown to pieces and everybody thought the end was was in front of them, one day the green leaves of Akena were started surfacing. Um, and uh, that canna flower, um, a two or three, uh, a month or two later, it actually blossomed and white canna flowers suddenly appeared in the middle of nowhere against this great big piece of concrete. And that, that symbolized hope. And that's, that was literally what, what galvanized their nation back into, uh, 
uh, back into being and, and Mazda started producing um, uh, three-wheel uh, motorcycles again because that's where they began. And, um, and uh, it, was, it was amazing that a single plant, a white canna, is the thing that galvanized the hope and the, and the, whole, the whole nation. So um, I, I, I digress there. So, so we've got, uh, <laughs> so we've, got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got, uh, and, and you know, it, if you think about uh, where we are today and the, uh, and the fact that we need a little bit of, a little bit of hope and, uh, and, and a little bit of circumspection as to where we're going and, mm. and hopefully the, uh, the, the Lord will lead us uh, out of all of this. So, if you look at, uh, we have a, a strong um, volume brand in terms of Ford. Uh, yeah. We were fortunate to have two premium brands in Volvo and Land Rover. Uh, we've got two Japanese brands. We have a, a very strong uh, Nissan dealership. And then we have Mazda in both Port Elizabeth and East London. So, um, uh, and, and because we have Mazda, uh, we, we do believe that the, the impossible is possible. So, uh, so it's, it's quite a good lesson in itself uh, for us and for everybody in our team because we often use the lessons that, that came out of Mazda um, to provide uh, uh, hope for the future. Uh, it sounds an amazing history lesson because I mean, just what you told us now about where the bombs hit in, in Hiroshima was something that didn't know and it's amazing to see like you're talking about the resilience and about the the surviving and it's, it's great to see that there's always a looking at the situation we're in now you know there's always a light at the end of the tunnel you know there's always a, a, a an ending you know there can be a good ending it, it depends on you if you're going to sit down and let it get you down you're not going to have that 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 happy ending but i must say i'm i'm very glad that you guys made the shift back because what you said earlier, the East Cape Caravan Group doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well as the motor. <laughs> <laughs> you guys came back to that. Um, what I wanted to check with you, um, Stephen, was with the different um, groups that you guys have within your, within your group. So you've got your Mazda, you've got your, your Nissan and your Ford, which, which are all uh, very much, I want to say, um, more, more your affordable side of cars, then you've got your Volvos and your Land Rovers, you've even got your, your Jaguars. How do you manage competition within the brand? Because, I mean, you are one group, the East Cape Motor Group, with different, different brands falling under you. Do you have, but you also have to promote specific brands. How does that internal com competition almost play out? You know, it, they, they all operate separately. So, um, so it, uh, the the competition is is there and it's and and that's what's that's what good for business it is it is about uh, competing and about uh, survival so each one is, has has got to do the best they can and uh, and and they've got to they've got to survive and uh, and thrive um, so so and and the strangely enough each one just seems to complement the other um, look the premium brands have taken immense uh, uh, strain. Um, but prior to the lockdown, uh, with the economy beginning to uh, to fall in its butt um, before lockdown, and 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 obviously uh, now, um, so we've we've had to adapt over time uh, on the premium brands. But um, because all premium brands have taken it, doesn't matter um, who who they are, they've all taken uh, immense strain. So they're all in that in that boat together. Um, I think uh, the, the premium bands are going to take a little longer to come out of this than, uh, than the rest because um, everybody's going to be, even people with money are going to be very cautious. And, and uh, I know the industry is saying that there's going to be a lot of buy down. So uh, uh, on, in terms of new cars and buy down from new cars to used cars. Which, uh, which is the reason why they believe the used car market is, uh, is, is a little more buoyant than new cars at the moment. Mm. But we'll, we'll see, you know, it's, it's very early days. Um, and uh, the, 
the, the fact is the, the new cars are, are governed uh, largely by, um, by government in terms of uh, their policies and the exchange rate. So, uh, because we import them, but by the same token, uh, the exchange rate facilitates uh, several manufacturers and, and one of them, the, the bigger ones, I think uh, uh, Ford, VW and Mercedes um, and, uh, and Toyota, they, they, uh, they export. So the, the RAND um, assists them there. Um, I would prefer the RAND to be a lot lower. <laughs> <laughs> Every time uh, in the, you know, wherever it is now, it, the manufacturers are forced to have regular price increases because they've, they've got to uh, stay in business. And every time you have a price increase, it shrinks the size of the pie. So uh, yeah. uh, hence the reason the new car market is taking strain, not just because of the, um, the economy, uh, the economy and the, and the RAND are, are, are inextricably uh, linked. And, um, and the new the used car market is is something that's uh, that's probably going to enable us to everybody to to survive for a while. Uh, although the uh, the amount of used car stock uh, to sell is is exceptionally short, so that in itself is a conundrum. Um, yeah. One thing I just wanted to touch on: we know we're talking to Stephen from Eastgate Motor Group. What do you drive, Stephen? You've got all these brands underneath you. You've got all these different cars to choose from. What do you drive? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you, you could get me into trouble, yeah? <laughs> 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 well, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed because I, fortunately, I drive several vehicles. <laughs> so uh, I, I, drive, I drive a small Ford uh, during the week. And, um, and I also drive uh, uh, the odd Nissan. And I'm also blessed to be able to drive the odd Mazda, so I, I I'm I'm very fortunate there. And then and then on the weekend, if I'm uh, if I'm lucky and uh, and my dealer principal at Land Rover allows me, I get to drive a, a, a new Discovery. I've always been a fan of the Discovery Four, and, and in particular the Discovery Five is a magnificent car. So I, uh, I I've been spoiled. I've been very privileged to uh, to drive a, a batch of really fantastic cars. It's, very, it's, it's awesome very, to be. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. Sorry, it's awesome to be in the business you're in and still be able to appreciate vehicles. I, I think uh, if if you have an appreciation for a Land Rover or a Jaguar, it kind of makes your job all the easier. Yes, look there. You know, it's it's amazing how how each manufacturer has got a phenomenal product. It's um, and and that's that's the reason why. Um, uh, Mazda, you know, Mazda just do things differently. They do things differently between the manufacturer and their and their dealer network, and they do diff things differently between uh, between their cars. They just have a, it's a they took the bomb, and they uh, they just do things differently. Um, it's a special special person and a special uh, um, uh, Hiroshima is a, is a special city. Uh, it's it's amazing, and I've had the privilege to have been been back to Japan. Um, they they are different to the to the Japanese that are on on on, on mainland. So um, uh, it's it's unusual that in one country, and I and I guess in America you would you would have people that are different in in north and south. So uh, the the fact is you do have these differences. So we. Uh, you know, and, and, and with Nissan, we have some, um, we have, we have some amazing product. The, the, the X-Trail, uh, <laughs> most people yeah. out there don't realize it's, it's the biggest selling SUV in the world. Um, and, uh, and, you know, here in South Africa, we sing the song about the Eco Sport because it's the biggest selling SUV in the country. So mm. each one has this pocket of excellence that they, uh, that they can, that they can trade with and and at the end of the day because all the product is so good it's really about it's about the person so the fact is we're actually in the people business um you're in the in a salesperson dealing with a with a customer and it, it is only about relationships yeah that's important that you touch on that i mean that's what people i don't think a lot of people realize they see 
car dealerships, they see manufacturers, but at the end of the day, you know, yes, you're fortunate to have a good product, but your biggest asset is the people that you have there. I mean, like you said, your, your main priority is to keep the people on board. Um, you have this long history within your company of resilient people coming through all these things to, to come out ahead. And I think that's the one thing that people need to realize is that I think the biggest asset in any business, you know, whether you have an amazing building, you have great products, your, your people is your, is your number one asset. And I think for, that's, that's a lesson that a lot of people need to, need to learn is like, look after your people and they'll look after you because I mean, at the end of the day, they're the, they are the business. Without the people, the business cannot, cannot survive. Precisely. That's the truth. And, uh, and, and you know, at, at, at the end of the day, uh, your people um, are your core and they are the people that do the business with the customers. Um, and I know that everybody's screaming that we're all going to go digital from now until the next century. But the fact is, you and I um, are, are desperate to, to talk to each other and to, to have a relationship. And, and you can't really have a relationship digitally. You can start, but you still want to see and feel somebody's eyes and their body language and, and, the, and the feeling of goodwill. That, that's, uh, that's only about people. You can't take that away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, you're speaking about new beginnings, but uh, something a, a lot of people won't know that you, you recently became, uh, you, you might strangle me for this, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you recently became a grandfather um, twice in, in, very, in a very short space of time. Well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a very young uh, grandfather, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, in my middle 50s. So we, uh, we, we were blessed with, with uh, two grandchildren, uh, two boys. My, my daughter had, uh, had a little boy and, uh, and then my son, Troy, had a, a little guy two weeks later. So, uh, and strangely enough, both 3.3 kgs. Um, so they were uh, s s smallish, I guess they were average uh, uh, babies, you, you, you forget. And, uh, you know, when, when Troy was, uh, was first born, he was, he was uh, a four kg baby. He was a 10 pounder. And uh, so we expected him to have a 10 pounder. But, but the, the, the fa fancy thing is that uh, uh, seeing that, that little guy and both little guys come out and they, they're healthy and, and they're normal and everything is good is such a blessing. And you, you forget what a miracle that birth is. Um, mm. And then when you see a little, a tiny little 3.3 .3 job, they, uh, the tiny little hands and fingers and feet and toes, it's, uh, it just is such a blessing. So um, a wonderful new, uh, a new lease for, for, for us and, uh, and, and first ones for both Steph and Troy. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's really was, a, is a blessing. I suppose it maybe gives a bit of perspective in the situation as well, you know, like life will, life will go on and, and we will make it and, and kind of be out the other end of this eventually. You're quite right, Chris. You, the fact is the, the sun is going to rise and the, and the moon is going to come. And, and uh, I don't know if, if, uh, if, if the people noticed what a magnificent full moon we had uh, a couple of days ago. Oh, so, it was amazing. And, and, and now we're, we're down to that tiny sliver of, uh, of moon now. So, Yes, things go full circle, and uh, and and uh, um, we we just have the faith that um, that uh, uh, the Lord is going to take us through through this thing and uh, and 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 lead us all. So it, it is about faith, and it is about hope, and it is about the things that we know. So uh, it's it is about being resilient, looking after your family and looking after your work family and, uh, and everybody staying safe. Yeah, no, absolutely. So at this stage, the next time you get out the house, you might be ready for water polo season again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll probably float a lot better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in the same boat there. Like, uh, for the, the, yeah. first, the first 40 days or so, like they, the first few weeks, push-ups and sit-ups were going great and everyone is really enthusiastic, but I can see everyone's slowly losing the will to live a little bit and the, the exercise is on the, on the down, and me included. It's getting much, much more difficult to stay motivated now because the novelty's worn off this whole thing. 
Yes, it has. It's, uh, it, is, it is exceptionally hard to... Well, I, I must admit that when we were at home, we were, we were making space for, for a little bit of exercise. And yeah. now we're back to work. Uh, I've lost that space. I've got to, I've got to reallocate uh, uh, some time to make sure that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting rid of what I've put back because I, uh, it was the water polo season. And in fact, uh, just as it was about to lock down, we were headed for, for Masters Water Polo. And, oh, wow. uh, and it, uh, uh, so we were all relatively, in our terms, reasonably fit and trim and, and, uh, and looking forward to uh, a couple of days in Cape Town's uh, Masters Water Polo. And, uh, and it all got taken away. Um, oh, wow. But uh, so we, we've, uh, we've, we've definitely put on a, well, I've definitely put on a few kgs. So, uh, <laughs> but our, our group for, for Masters Water Polo has all stayed together and, uh, and uh, talked a lot of rubbish and, and hopefully we'll, we'll get together as soon as, uh, as soon as we can. Oh, that's, that's encouraging. I'm on, I think I'm on a hockey WhatsApp group. I'm on a jiu-jitsu group. And everybody's still kind of communicating as though nothing's nothing's going on. You think we would we trained yesterday, so those those groups are still <laughs> as busy as ever. Um, we've we've had um, it's, there's been there's been hockey whole hockey season cancelled this year. It's been the craziest thing. Um, uh, the world world jiu jitsu champs has been cancelled. Shorty was supposed to fly to Tokyo. We were we should have fought a couple of weeks ago, and that just keeps getting moved back. So there's just this whole year is just on hold at the moment. Um, yes, it has. It has really been thrown upside down and inside out, and and uh, everybody's lives, personal and and sporting and and work. It's just it's turmoil that we could we could never have foreseen, eh? Yeah, yeah. And you you've had a bittersweet year. You I think for personally you've had you've you've had a tough one with your father, and then you've had two beautiful grandkids. So so life life takes turns of its own. It's a it's the strangest thing. Eh? It does. It just it just carries on with or without you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it is well, important to be on the boat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm glad it's with you. And thank you for taking the time to chat to us. It's like, um, you know, when we look at the business community, you're the first guy that we, we think of. And it, it really makes sense to have you on the show. And, and I think a lot of people would like to hear from you. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. And, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the, there's so many nice things to talk about. Actually, strangely enough, early this morning, I was just thinking about uh, all the animals at, uh, at, at Addo Game Park and, and how, how strange it must be for them not seeing any cars in the game park. And uh, nobody looking, staring at them and taking pictures. And, uh, and I thought to myself, well, as soon as it reopens, I want to be one of those first cars because I think the animals will all want to know who are these things that are coming back. <laughs> And uh, maybe we'll get some more great pictures. Yeah, it is amazing. It's so it's such an under underplayed place, I think. Yes, it's really special. Yeah, we're very lucky. Guys, thanks so much again for, for joining us. Um, I, I'm just concerned with two things. Like, I I don't want to see the black eye Chris gets because we heard that Stephen might want to punch him. <laughs> what I also concerned <laughs> is that no, I trained with. Okay. I, I trained with Chris and he was talking about strangling people. So I don't want to be the first one back in the gym with him, which, which worries me personally. So I, we'll see, we'll see how things go. Hopefully things start, start picking up again and with, with your business. First off with your family, Stephen, I hope everything goes well on that side and with your business Thank I hope you. picking up again. Um, I know, like you said, more staff coming in, keeping those customers happy, keeping us, um, keeping the, the rest of the Eastern Cape and the country in good wheels. I think that's, that's what we're looking forward to. I think that's a great job that you guys are doing. As we said, one of the most recognizable brands in, in, in our part of the world. And obviously you guys have got businesses all over. So it was great chatting to you guys. Um, Chris, once again, thanks for you as well. And uh, we'll, we'll catch up again. Maybe if this thing keeps going or when things get back up uh, and running, we can chat to Stephen again. And me and Chris, we'll, uh, we'll catch up with someone else probably. But guys, thanks so much for your time. And uh, thanks. we'll chat again. Thank right. you if so much going, for having us, guys. Thank you. God bless. If Take care. Going, if this keeps going much longer, we're probably all going to have to go live at Eastern Cape Motors. <laughs> 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 I'll bring my mattress and a pillow and I'll be in the basement somewhere. <laughs> all right guys thank you so much eh? thank, you, thank you so much trouble, eh? perfect guys thank you so much okay. cheers
Great, Thank then. Bye-bye.